living word. <laughs> I want to welcome you all today to our service. Father, we give you honor and glory and praise. As we, your people, kneel before you, God, Father, your desire is to have a deep relationship with us. It's for us to be intimate with you, to get to know you as we get to know our friends. And so, Lord, for 2016, you've brought us through victoriously. For 2016, you've delivered us from many traps of the enemy, from illnesses, from accidents, from all types of things, God, and you were right there with us. John chapter 14, verse 12 to 17, and I would read that. Verse 12, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than this he will do, because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because in neither these, because in neither he sees him or knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be with you. What a blessing it is for us to start the year with the Holy Spirit. I know the Sabbath school uh, before I knew that, before I learned that uh, Sabbath school is talking about the Holy Spirit, I, I, had, I was very impressed to talk about the Holy Spirit. And so I would like us to take a moment to pray for the Holy Spirit as we delve into God's Word one more time. Our Heavenly Father, our hearts are filled with gratitude as we embark upon a new year, as we open God's Word. mighty work of the Holy Spirit. We depend on you fully. We usher you in each and every one of our hearts, not only for today, for the rest of this year, 24-7. We want to walk with you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I like to look at the Bible. I like to look at the same Bible, let's say Book of John, from various perspectives. I like to look, look, look at Book of John from the perspective of uh, learning what it means to have eternal life, which we did last weekend. We learned that eternal life, according to Book of John, it's not something that you can possess as if you are possessing things, but eternal life, according to the book of John, is being in that living relationship with Jesus Christ is what eternal life is all about. That's what's going to give us the quality of eternal life. Before we, we enter into heaven to experience the quantity aspects of eternal life. So eternal life comes with quantity and quality. Just like marriage, that has tremendous quality because it is sizzling, it is going great, and it's getting better every day. Amen? And also, it has a quantity that you have a long time together, uh, even sharing eternity. This morning and, and the next weekend, it is my privilege to look at the Bible, look at the book of John from the perspective of Holy Spirit. 
When I look at Book of John from the perspective of Holy Spirit, it made me so excited to realize that entire Book of John is about Holy Spirit. Amen? Entire Book of John is about Holy Spirit, and I cannot miss it. So let's go on and, and sharing some insights about the vital roles of the Holy Spirit in the Book of John. Let's look through some of the scriptures stemming from the beginning. Chapter 1, verse 13. Book of John talks about the need for us to be born again, born of God. And then actually John compares the idea of being born of God and being born of a flesh. And then if you look at John chapter 7, John compares between the fact that there's only two kinds of reality in all of our lives. There's two realities. One reality is that either you and I are born of God or we remain being born of a flesh. All of us are born as a flesh. And actually, John chapter 1, 13 and 14 make it very, very interesting that it is born of God, not of a flesh, not of human will, and not of husband's will. (laughs) Interesting. In other words, you are not, we all of us are born of a human flesh. That's what made us to be human. But Bible uh, shares the different reality. And there's a different reality in a spiritual realm. And God wants and desires and God is determined. God wants to do everything he can that will allow us to be born of God. Born from above. Oh, how much you and I desire to be born anew from above, not remain as someone who are born of this earth. And so it compares that, born of God. And then verse chapter 3, verse 5, it says, born of water and the spirit. So, so then if you compare both of that, you will know for sure, born of God means what? Born of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So then, Born from above is something that you and I cannot render. It is something that God can only bring. And it is is something that Holy Spirit is willing to bring. To bring a new fresh beginning, new birth in all of our lives. The transformation that God can only bring is something that Holy Spirit is there to bring. And actually, if I look at this text, Born of water and the spirit. The and here in Greek is chi. Chi means equal with. Actually, the chi, the word chi in Greek is used to explain what comes before. In other words, born of water, which is the what? Holy Spirit. That's a powerful understanding. So, God desires for us to be born again from above through uh, the, the symbol represented by water, which is the what? Holy Spirit. Isn't it interesting that you and I are born in the water, physically speaking? Mother's womb. So we're supposed to know how to swim to begin with because that's what we did for seven, I mean, nine months, right? We were born in mother's womb, womb water. And the Bible, John, uses that physical reality as a truth for spiritual reality. As much as we are, you and I are born in the water, mother's womb, and you and I are needing to be born again by the water of the Holy Spirit, but this water is something that needs to be overwhelm you, engulf you. It's going to be something that will allow you to be to encompass you. It's going to be something that then needs to baptize you. The sprinkle of the Holy Spirit is not going to work. We need to be immersed in it. We need to swim in it. We need to drink it even. <laughs> we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is going to engulf you with that. And then when the Holy Spirit baptizes us in the water of the Holy Spirit, 
We're going to be born again, born anew, and we're going to experience a transformation every day of our lives. Amen? Born of the Holy Spirit. Born of the water of the Holy Spirit. And then, continues to talk about water. No wonder, because water in the book of John is very, very important. Continues to talk about the Holy water. And this is an amazing reality. And then he says, water that I give him, spring of water. It is not just a water, but it's a fountain within your valley. We as Christians, our valley needs to be touched by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> valley needs to be warmed up by the Holy Spirit. And it says, spring of water. And then I like the next verse, next sentence. It says what? Can we read it together if you know English? <laughs> spring of water and then what? Oh, we can do better than that. I know all of us are being woken up this morning, okay? Okay, water that I give him, spring of water, and then what? Welling up, Welling up what? Within. Within. I love this word. This is a perfect aorist tense. It means that welling up, keep on coming up. Keep on coming up. Welled up and being well, welling up, and it's going to well up again and again and again. Never stop coming up. Never stop giving you the energy and power that we need to live life in its fullest, the way that God has designed us to live. Not just to live to survive, but to thrive in the power of God. Spring of water, welling up like a fountain. No matter how much stone you put in, in the fountain, no matter how much the dirty, you know, dirt you put on the, on the fountain, it has an ability to what? Keep welling up. Clear the path. Holy Spirit desires to give us that, that experience and being renewed and refreshed and recharged and, and regrouped and then, you know, uh, empowered every moment of our lives, no matter how much of a dirt and Satan throws at you, no matter how, how life has a way of making it messy, God has a way of refreshing it and renew it and make it new again and again and again. Amen? I need that. And then, going on even further, I love this John chapter 7, verse 37 and 39. If you have your Bible, mark this uh, passage. It says, if, er, let's all read that together. If anyone thirsts, let's all read that together. Because now John is getting to some conclusion as to what this water is all about, what this rebirth is all about. He says, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart, shall flow rivers of living water. Now, this he said about the Spirit, which those who believe in him were to receive. Oh, wow. You cannot make it any, any clearer by saying that this water they've been talking about, chapter 3, water that um, you know, this Samaritan woman was, was looking to have, physical water, and then Jesus illustrated that the, that the water that you are going to drink is going to make you thirsty again, but water I give you will, will never, never allow you to be thirsty again. It will quench your thirst. It will... It will fulfill our hunger and our you know, vanity of life. And that water is the Holy Spirit. Amen? Oh, how much we desire for that water. I tell you, even from my 30-some years of ministry, I cannot, I would not be where I am if it were not for the water of the Holy Spirit. I remember a time when I set aside five years in my life, five years in my life, I set aside my time to travel all over the world. I've been to Africa, I've been all over the world, I've been traveling every week, almost every weekend, 30 some weekend of the year, I will be gone. That was a unique experience, five years of my life. 
He literally come home and get things ready, and I got to go. I got to move. I got to go. And then literally, literally, I have to prepare myself on the go. I was on the go all the time. Sometimes I want to tell you, I'm not boasting about this. I'm being humbled by it. Sometimes I must tell you, even until the time I would stand up to speak, I would not know what to talk about. Not because I'm not prepared, but because I'm learning to be led by the Holy Spirit. I don't want to just regurgitate what I knew. I don't want to just give people a lecture, but I want the Holy Spirit to use me. So I have my notes, but I need to set aside my notes. I stand up. Even until the moment when I utter my first word, I would not know what to talk about. It was that desperate for me to depend on the Holy Spirit. And guess what happens? As soon as I opened my mouth, I knew it was the Holy Spirit. Because he would give me thoughts after thoughts after thoughts. And then after I finished it, I could only say, Lord, you have done it again. On the way home, on the airplane, I was coming down. I would come down to Los Angeles, dark, you know, cloudy Los Angeles because of smoke and everything, you know. And I said, Lord, you have done it again. I want to tell you, not just me as a pastor, but just each and every one of us, we cannot, we cannot live without Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is enabling us to not only to continue to have a living, but Holy Spirit is the one, I'm going to talk about it, He's the one who can truly, truly teach you in a way that nobody else can. Even though, let's talk about this, even though, let's go on and talk about this, it is the, it is the Spirit, the reason why we are so dependent on the Holy Spirit is because it is the Spirit that gives what? Life, this life is not just a physical kind of life. It is the life that makes life meaningful because it is possible to, for that two human beings live together and yet the relationship can be dead. How come they're, they're alive? They're breathing. They're still talking, eating, walking, going around, doing things, and yet relationship can be dead. Right? Life with no purpose. No sense of direction, no power to live, and just barely, barely surviving on. And I want to tell you, it is the spirit that gives life. It is the spirit, flesh is comfort, nothing flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Let me move on to the next level here. Spirit. Is someone who leads you, into, leads you into all truth. But what's interesting about this is that who is the truth? Who is the truth? Well, let's look at the book of John. Truth is actually Jesus. If you look at the book of John, let's, let's take a look at this two powerful passage and to see, okay, Holy Spirit is the one who leads you into all truth. And then the role of the Holy Spirit in guiding us into the truth. It is something that you and I need to completely realize. Let's take a look at the book of John chapter 8. If you have your Bible, chapter 8, two verses, 31 and 32 to begin with. Jesus then said, I'm reading it from RSV translation. Jesus then said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word... You are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. We all know this passage. So this truth is the teachings of God, according to this passage, right? These teachings of God will make you free. But let's take a look at chapter 8, verse 36. It says, so if the Son makes you free, you will be what? Free indeed. So... Get this, my friend. Holy Spirit is the word of God. The Holy Spirit is the, is, the, is the water, water that allow us to be born again. And then that water is the Holy Spirit. And then Holy Spirit is the one who leads us into the truth. But when in fact, truth is what? Jesus Christ. Jesus, is, the truth is more than teachings, you know, fundamental doctrines of the Bible, but truth is, number one, Jesus is the truth. 
So it is the personhood of Jesus Christ that you and I are called to encounter. So I want us to really understand this one. Holy Spirit, I mean, truth is the personhood of Jesus Christ, which means, which means that you and I can only come to the truth of God as you and I are led to Jesus. In other words, the only way for us to come to the truth of our lives, well, when we say truth, truth about God, truth about our lives. And truth hurts, right? Even I remember, even in my experience, even my, in my relationship with my wife, sometimes she says some things and I know she's telling the truth. But it is my human pride that would not allow me to embrace that, right? Have you experienced that? I know, I know my wife is telling me the truth, but now is not the time for me to embrace it. <laughs> and so you try to reject it, you try to deny you try to be defensive and offensive and all that. You try to rationalize and all that. And then what happened? You go to the Word of God, you go to the Word of God, and then under the power of the Holy Spirit, and then you are led to the truth of God's word, truth, who is Jesus. You're led to Jesus through the Holy Spirit, and then Holy Spirit has a way of teaching you where there is what? No escape. Then it's like, bam, I get it. Like, idiot, you don't get it. <laughs> Holy Spirit sometimes use those kind of language. <laughs> you don't get it. <laughs> You are just proud, helpless. But let me tell you, if my wife tells me those things, if my wife tells me I'm an idiot, then, then she'll be bringing out the worst in me. <laughs> we may have a big fight or, or, you know, we may have all kinds of defensive mechanisms, manipulative tactics that we use on each other. But I want to tell you, when the Holy Spirit come and convicts your heart, Holy Spirit come and teach you, and when the Holy Spirit and come and lead you to Jesus, who is the epitome and ultimate personification of embodiment of what truth is all about, there is no escape. It is so powerful that you allow yourself to just like, Lord, I get it. But we get it in such a way that while he teaches us to the truth of ourselves, truth about God, he empowers us, he encourages us. And in the end, we experience his love even deeper than ever. Amen? You and I needing to be taught by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? This year, how many of you desire, or desiring to be, to be led by the Holy Spirit, to be taught by the Holy Spirit? And that's why it is such a cool thing as a man and as a woman. This year, I have a challenge for you. Go to God's Word in your closet, wherever you may be. Open God's Word and recognize the work of the Holy Spirit, realizing that it is the Holy Spirit who can only lead us to the truth, who is Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit's role leading us to Jesus, who is the truth. And then how does he do that? How does he do that? Through his word. He only does, he does that through his word. And therefore, you don't need anything else. You and I don't need anything else but God's word, willing heart to be led by him and go to God's word, recognize the role of the Holy Spirit and knowing that this is what this is. This is already breathed by the Holy Spirit. And as soon as you open God's word, you're breathing Holy Spirit. And then you open God's word. I shared this to my kids. A couple of days ago, I said to my kids, I don't want anything from you. I, had, I, don't, I want nothing from you guys. But you to have the word of God in your life. The other day I was talking to somebody. They overcame insurmountable challenges in their marriage. They were actually about to be divorced. They had every reason to be divorced. But and yet, somehow, some way, 
they were able to make it through. They were able to reconcile. They were able to, you know, have children and, and they have a beautiful family. So I talked to the one of the I talked to the father. I said, you know, it is amazing how how your 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 child was able to overcome insurmountable challenge in, in his marriage and and he's having this family, you know, putting family together. It's amazing. And this is what he says. He says, yes, God did it, but now it is my prayer that they would continue to have the word of God. When they were in crisis, they were close to the word of God, but having gone through, having been sustained, I am finding them being drifted away from the word of God. And I'm deeply concerned about that. Wow. That was a kind of realization, something that I never would have thought about. And it really made me realize the one question in my mind. As we embark upon this new year, year 2017, that do I have the word of God in my heart? Is my life being operated by the word of God? Is my life being led by the word of God? Is my life direction, even the impulses of my life, is my purpose of my life, is all that I do, I, am I being directed by the word of God? Am I ready to confess like, like Peter did after making so much mess in his life, and yet he would come to God realizing that it was the word of God that sustained him. It was the word of God that transformed him to be a follower of Jesus Christ, and he was willing to die for Jesus just upside down in his life and then he confessed before Jesus where shall else wherever else we would go when we have the word of God I'm telling you without the word of God we will be lost we'll continue to be lost Without the word of God, life will continue to be empty. Without the word of God, we'll be on this treadmill where we try to survive, whether we do ministry, whether we do anything else. But where else we would go when you and I have the word of God? It is through God's word, Holy Spirit, lead us onto a next level. It is through God's word, Holy Spirit, ever be present in our lives. Because it is through God's word, Jesus become real in our hearts. In other words, Jesus is the embodiment of what the truth is all about. Jesus is that embodiment. And therefore, when Holy Spirit comes, word of God comes. When the word of God comes, Jesus comes. When Jesus comes, truth comes. And truth transforms and it changes it gives us the freedom from the bondages of our lives in a way that we have never, ever realized. It frees us from the bondage of self, frees us from the bondage of whatever the mundaneness that we experience in our lives. Do you need refreshing spirit in your life? Do you need someone to feel you in a way that nothing else can? It is the word of God, but Holy Spirit cannot work without an aid of God's word. Holy Spirit leads us to God's word and therefore lead us to Jesus and therefore lead us to the truth and that truth of Jesus will transform us in a way that nothing else can. Ellen G. White said, Ellen G. White said, that is the school, it is in that school of Jesus. It is in that school of Jesus, which means word of God, Holy Spirit, you and I, with God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, in that Trinity, in that moment of Trinity, Jesus, Holy Spirit, Jesus equals with God's word, and me, in that Trinity moment, in that school of Jesus, God trains his people for the work that God can only empower us to do so. Amen? And I invite you this year to enroll into this school of Jesus. Amen, this year. All you need is the word of God. All you need is a willing heart. 
All you need the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit right here already. And it is, it is breathed with the Holy Spirit. And He's willing to breathe on us once again. John chapter 21, He said, breathe on you and receive the Holy Spirit. Every moment we need the breath of the Holy Spirit. Breathe on me, breath of God. Breathe on me, breath of God. So that we may be renewed and refreshed and be transformed every moment of our lives. Because I know that Michigan air is pretty fresh, but we need the air of the Holy Spirit. You and I need to breathe on it. It is a breath. How long you can go without that air? How long? We need, we are utterly dependent on that breath of God. Let the breath of God breathe on us every moment of our lives. We cannot, we cannot spiritualize by thinking, oh, how much I desire to be led by the Holy Spirit without going to God's word, without being led to God's word. I'm determined, you know, this is the Bible I got when I was studying for seminary. <laughs> and I find myself going back to the same Bible that I used to use 32 years ago. And I want to tell you, it is the Word of God, Word of God, and Word of God. I want to tell you this morning, my question to you is this, do you have His Word in your life? May God lead us to His Word through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. 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 Shall we pray together? Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And in him, Lord, we find forever friendship with God's word and allow the word of God to lead us to Jesus and the truth of Jesus. Lord, in that this year, you would help us, you would empower us to come alive in a way that nothing else can. Give us the refreshing spirit from above and in our perspective, in our understanding, in our direction of life and even the impulses of our lives, even the motives of our lives, even the attitudes of our lives, even the emotions of our lives to be led by you as you continue to baptize us in the power of the Holy Spirit. Help us not to just learn about it, but to know you deeply and to walk with you this year in your spirit. In Jesus' name, everyone say, Amen. Amen. Amen.